They're just sort of little creative spaces in themselves that are just fantastic to look through and we really wanted to you know, share them. One of my favourite things when you open a sketchbook is that it's not just artistic practice. You kind of get lists like shopping lists, like oh, I've got to go to the shops and buy eggs and milk and butter. It's not this is my practice and this is how I work and these are my ideas. It's very much a this is my life contained within one book. In the Tate Archive there's a variety of different sketchbooks. We've got a sort of big name 20th century British artists, people like Graham Sutherland, John Piper, Donald Rodney. If you look at the sketchbooks I've got, you can see in some of them where I've drawn something or I've painted something and then I'll paint over the top. So. I, like nothing is a finished piece of work and I'll like I'll decide I don't like something and I'll paint over it and or I'll rip a page out or stick something in it's very like the, the trying out zone if that makes sense <laughs> you're allowed to make mistakes in a sketchbook it's, a, it's very much like a space where actually mistakes are encouraged because you kind of learn more from the mistakes that happen in a sketchbook because then you know not to pursue them further into the artworks. I think you can often trace an idea uh, to arrive at a finished sculpture or painting or piece uh, often takes many 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 steps. It's quite nice to follow the thinking process which is often revealed in a sketchbook from one thing to another, how something perhaps started at a point that you really wouldn't have imagined if you'd just seen that finished piece. Sometimes I'm working on, say, five projects at once. So one project may be starting, another may be finishing, and another may be in the middle of its production process. So I use the sketchbook to organise my mind throughout the processes and also to record how you can basically think about so many things at once. Here's a sketchbook recording some very early storyboard sessions on Warhorse. And Warhorse was is Michael Walpurgo's story about the First World War and it was staged at the National Theatre. This is our very early stage drawings. The, it's very I think it's very important to realise that sketchbooks are just this space where artists do whatever they want and it. it's not a precious thing that needs to be kind of handled with care. And from my point of view, it is a precious thing that needs to be handled with care, but as a, from an artist's point of view, it's it's what they carry around and when they put it in their pocket, they're, they're ab some of them are absolutely battered. <laughs> like You obviously can see that these artists have lived through these sketchbooks. I think sketchbooks are really like diaries. The majority of it is like a collection of images, lots of location drawing, reportage drawing, um, which is drawing where you just record what's going on in your location and your environment. So every morning I'll write a couple of pages just to myself or whatever comes to my mind. So it's, it's kind of like a space to, I guess, liberate myself and free up ideas. If a drawing isn't going well or doesn't look good, it simply records that state of mind at the time. And actually, months later, or lucky enough, if you're collecting your, if you've kept your drawing, your sketchbooks over 35 years, years later, you can look back at it and think 
and see a different quality to an unfinished or not particularly loved drawing in a sketchbook. You can see what you were going through at the time, what you were thinking of at the time, the context of it, which you can't, when you're having a personal expression in a, a private space called a sketchbook, you don't always have an objective sense of what you're doing. That's the pleasure of it. I sort of tend to draw people that I see on trains and uh, places that I've been. Sometimes I'll put a film on and I'll suddenly be really, really inspired by it and by the imagery and the colours. I'll pause it and then I'll get my sketchbook and I'll paint a certain scene. I recently watched Scarface, which was like so inspiring. I don't know why I hadn't seen it before, but there were so many um, bright colours and snappy lines. I think, if anything, sketchbooks are like more alive than ever, but I guess it's in sharing them that's changing, like with the fact that we have computers and we have scanners and like ways of sharing them. I think it's, it's reaching more people, if anything, and it's encouraging more people to, to record their own personal experiences. This is a show I'm working on right now, right this very moment, which is Birmingham Royal Ballet's The Tempest. I now tend to use drawings that are done in my sketchbook and then repeated and then drawn on again to capture a feeling of movement. And then what I do is I photograph uh, the drawings and send them immediately to the choreographer, the composer, and sometimes the dancers and the makers. We chose to digitise this material because it for, for me, it's really special. It's kind of the thing that we have in our archive that is unique to our archive. I think it's really cool that sketchbooks are being digitalised on the Tate website just because you come to Tate and you see the final product but you never see any of the thought process. And when you do see a sketchbook in an art gallery, it's normally behind a glass cabinet open on one page and you feel so much frustration because you just want to flick through. And hopefully it could kind of give school kids like an insight into how professional artists use their sketchbooks and maybe could change how they use it at school so it's less prescribed and maybe they can see that you can have more creative freedom. I think we also really wanted to share this in a global audience. There's one Tate archive and if you digitise this stuff and put it up on the website, everyone can see this material. Because of the way our website is designed, you can now basically take this sketchbook on a virtual walk around the gallery. And being able to see established artists' sketchbook and seeing how they kind of got to a final piece, that's really valuable, especially to someone who's learning to make art. Art education is about giving someone some resources and some skills and teaching them those, then they can develop more and more and more in their own way and make it more and more personal. Still more so at uh, art college and perhaps even more so when someone becomes a mature, independent artist. If I was going to advise someone on starting a sketchbook, I would tell them to do exactly what I did and not start on the first page because I think there's a lot of stigma in, oh, the first page. I don't want to touch it, I don't want to ruin it, I don't want to make bad work, but if you kind of like wreck your your book almost, and I, I don't treat them preciously, I just chuck them in a bag, I'll, like I'll wreck pages first and then I'll paint on them, so I would, I would say you just have to be really fearless and just start. <laughs>